Hi developers, in this video we'll learn how to use Swagger in order to generate documentation for our API but also to generate UI web pages in order to test our API. Swagger uses the Open API specification in order to describe how web services should be invoked. When it's added to our project, Swagger will try to discover all the exposed web services from within our application and then you will try to generate a JSON file that contains all the metadata or all the information about how to invoke these web services. This information like the parameters, the URL, the uh, HTTP verbs and the type of response types and the data models and so on. This JSON file could be used later in order to generate a client SDK because it contains all the information about the web services. Follow me in this video in order to show you how we can add Swagger into an ASP.NET Core application and then generate the documentation for our web API. We'll see a demo using ASP.NET Core with Visual Studio. For that here I'll go to File, Create a New Project. Then I'll choose the .NET Core templates and here I'll choose ASP.NET Core Web Application. After that I'll choose the API template then I'll just hit OK to uh, let Visual Studio generate the project for me. Then here Visual Studio generates the project with the dependencies and here I have a controllers folder which contains a values controller which uh, here contains a sample uh, crude operations to implement um, get, post, delete, and uh, update. We can run this application by going here and run it as a web application. Then I'll hit F5. The application starts and launches at API slash values, which here will uh, return this array of values containing value 1 and value 2. Those are the same exact values that we saw right here returned by this uh, web service. Now we want to add Swagger to this project so that developers who want to consume those web services, they will know how to do that. So let's add Swagger to our project. Swagger is available as a NuGet package. So I'll go and add that NuGet package to my project by going and say here, uh, manage uh, NuGet uh, packages. But first of all, I need to stop my application. Then I'll go and do that again. So right click on the project, manage NuGet packages. We'll have this window here. We'll need to go to browse to look for NuGet packages. And here I look for swashbuckle dot ASP.NET Core. So Swagger on ASP.NET uh, or on any .NET application is called Swashbuckle. So for that here I need to look for this uh, Swashbuckle dot ASP.NET Core package. I'll go and install it. It has some dependencies that needs to be added like here the um, Swagger UI, Swagger Gen and so on. So I'll add all of those uh, dependencies. It's now installed successfully with this green icon so and they can check that also if we g I go to dependencies nuget then from here I can find that swash backle.asp.net core was added successfully to my project now I'm, I'm ready to uh, add it to my application to do that I need to add it through the startup class the startup class is the class that contains the configuration for my application so I configure startup in order to tell it to use a Swagger. So here we have two steps we need to go through. The first one is to add Swagger to the, to the uh, ASP.NET uh, application, then to configure it and use it. So let's start by the first one. So to add it, I'll go and uh, to the configure services. And here I go to services dot add swagger you can see that here the autocomplete will uh, have will display here add uh, swagger add swagger gen so this is the uh, code i need to add we can add also some uh, configuration to this so for that i will go and uh, paste this code where here we are telling swagger that um, 
uh, information about the uh, version number and the name of the API. Here I'm calling it my API. Let's go and resolve this namespace right here using Swashbuckle. So this is the first step in order to enable Swagger in our application. After that, we need to move to the configure method. And from here, I'll use this code snippet to tell uh, the application to use Swagger. So this will enable the middleware. After that, we need to uh, specify the path from where to find the swagger.json. The swagger.json is the file that will contain all the information collected by Swagger. So Swagger will go and scan uh, my uh, application and look for all the exposed endpoints. Then it will put the information about those uh, REST API inside this swagger.json so that this file could be used later in order to generate client applications. Now we can go and run the application again, and here we'll see the generated Swagger UI. The application launches by default on API slash values, but if I go to slash Swagger, then from here I can see the generated UI that was generated by Swagger. Here it contains the information about the exposed web services. So we see that here it's the values controller, which have those five uh, API that are exposed publicly. So we have the get API, where here I have uh, information about the parameters. Here it tells me there is no parameter about the response. So here we can change if we want text, uh, JSON, or whatever. So here I'll go and tell it I want uh, the response to be of JSON format. And then here I get the responses the response types that are uh, expected or this web service returns. So here it returns, for example, the uh, code 200 for success. We have the same thing for the other web services. In addition to exposing information about those web services, we can also go and try it out. For that, we have this button, try it out. So let's click on it and here it will uh, display a button for execute. So if I run execute, it will run a re request to my API that is now running. So it will uh, send a request to this URL where I have my get API. Then it gets here the response type, which it returns value one and value two. And remember value one and value two are the values returned by the uh, values uh, controller right here. If we go and invoke the get by ID right here, then we need to pass the parameter ID, which should be passed through the uh, URL. And if I go back here, we go to get by ID, we can see that Swagger detected that that ID uh, should be passed as a parameter in the URL. And if uh, it tells me that here, of course, it's a required parameter. Otherwise, it will go to a slash uh, API dot slash values. Let's go and try it out. So here I have an entry to specify which ID I want to pass. So let's say I want the ID seven, for example. And for a bit of fun, I'll go and put a breakpoint right here on the get so that we can check the ID that was uh, passed. Then I go to uh, execute that request and here Visual Studio interrupts me to say now you are running on this line of code through this breakpoint. And here if I put the cursor on top of ID, I can see that the value is exactly 7. I continue and go back to Swagger and here we can see the response is value the string that was returned by, the, by that web service. The same thing applies for the put where we have all the parameters needed, the post also, where here we need to uh, specify which um, string we want to uh, send to that web service and also to the latest one, uh, delete. Now Swagger generated this UI using the swagger.json file. Here we have the link for that file. So if I go and 
open it in a new window here it will display this uh, the content of this uh, json file which contains information about all the exposed web services so it knows which uh, url and which um, uh, json responses the input and the output of each service in addition to the uh, expected response types and so on this information is enough for developers to create client SDKs. But Swagger here, it go a step further and suggests that it can create the client SDK for us. So if I, if I go to the swagger.io website, we go to tools, then here we can, say, we can see that it have uh, a tool called Swagger Cogen. This one will try to generate a client SDK using the uh, swagger.json file that was uh, exposed. So it can generate client SDKs for l many languages. So here you can see it, uh, it supports java.net, uh, node.js, uh, uh, any JavaScript application, and many other uh, frameworks. In addition to those features, Swagger also provides a tool to add commands to those um, exposed uh, Swagger UI. So in our code, if we go back to the controller, we, we might add commands right here to describe what this web service uh, does uh, exactly. And we can automatically display those commands and the Swagger UI. So that's doable through adding some other uh, configuration to this uh, project. In addition to the code documentation, we can also add some other uh, annotations to say, for example, the uh, response type or the expected res reproduces response type is of type. And here we can uh, specify uh, which type uh, or which response this web service will return. Those configuration will be parsed by Swagger and they will be displayed inside the Swagger UI. I hope you liked the video and thank you.